Hi, I'm Kate Mancy. I play Hunter on Costa Grande, which is streaming on Amazon Freebie. You are watching Pop Culture with Pat. Welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I am so excited to be joined by today's guest. Today, you can see her in a couple projects right now, actually. So she plays Hunter on Freebie's Casa Grande. You can also see her in General Hospital, where she plays Christina. Today, I am talking to Kate Manzi. Thank you for coming on the show today, Kate. Hi, happy to be here. So I want to start things off, obviously, talking all things Casa Grande. First off, I just wanted to say congratulations on the show, I watched the show all in like one sitting pretty much. And oh, nice. I loved it. Thank it's you. Probably one of, I'd say one of my favorite series of the year. So I wanted to. Whoa, favorite series of the year. That's yep. Hot. Hi, thank you. You're welcome. Mine too, obviously. <laughs> so to, to start things off, I wanted to kind of just ask you, you know, what was it about this character and this series that, you know, made you look at it and you're like, hey, I really want to be a part of this, this series and this story overall? Good question. Yeah. Well, I think uh, that's sort of a two part. I mean, I think firstly, when I read um, the pilot, I wanted to be a part of a part of it because Hunter, the the role that I play Hunter spoke to me most of all. Then looking at it as sort of a broader project, it felt like it was really important. And I can't think of I don't think there's anything like this out there right now that is act actually bilingual like like this show is so that felt like it was a really important um project for me to to be a part of that I wanted to use my voice for and um the role of hunter I just so funny sometimes you read something and it kind of delayed like it sinks in a little bit more after you digest it but I read hunter and immediately was like her this is yeah this is the next thing for me so um what spoke to me most about her is just i think uh the most enticing thing was just the way that the writing has has her be so um she's so brazen and so like unabashedly just raw and right. messy and um unfiltered and i hadn't yet done a character like that before so that was the most enticing thing for me uh and just playing a woman who uh was really not afraid to take the um the sort of ideas that people of who people think she should be in that family as an adopted member of the family and just like relentlessly holding to what she believes in um i could relate to that and uh the parts i couldn't relate to i was also excited about so yeah, yeah. something like you said something you know different for you so i'm curious where you said this was kind of your first time playing a character like this where as far as bringing hunter to life where did you draw inspiration from when bringing this character to life yeah um I think from, I, I don't, I can't, it's so interesting. I really like, it came to me so quickly when I read it. I just felt like I knew who this was. Like I just, I saw it visually first. And sometimes as an actor, I have, you have like an inside out approach where something you like connect with something because it, it matches with your soul so deeply that you understand it that way. Or on the other side, it's like an outside in approach where you, you know, really get sort of, um, I, I don't know how to explain it, like the shell of the character more, I guess I would say. And for this, it was just like such alignment. Like I really, um, I think that I, the similarities were so strong. Like I think she and I both have in common that we are, you know, we, we are, have like a singular determination once we focus on something and we're very loyal um, and have a really strong sense of justice. Um, and I think with Hunter, she tends to get a bit messier than I do. Um, or perhaps I was that way when I was a bit younger. Um, but she just kind of goes through her life like a tornado and just like knows what she wants and goes for that. So I love that about her and, and really wanted to um, lean into that. And then for the parts that were different, um, I, I, 
I don't know. They just kind of, I just, it just made, it just like clicked. Yeah. I just, I knew, I just knew who she was. I leaned into like the more parts of myself that are a bit more scrappy and, um, and the things that I strongly believe in and would fight for. Yeah. She, so Hunter, she's one of my favorite characters on the series for some of the reasons that you listed already. I love how, you know, she refuses to kind of be put in a box, like you said. Um, and then she just, she loves when people underestimate her and getting to prove people I'm wrong. I'm so glad you said that. That's my, as an actor and as a person, my favorite thing ever. Like I, it's such a gift when people underestimate you because the immediate reaction, I don't think for everybody, but for me at least is just like, okay, watch me. Yeah, And that's such a gift to have that sort of, flame um and she also like i think coming from a soap opera myself from coming from days of our lives you know i had sort of a similar trajectory in people wanting to put me into a box a bit of of you know this is what we think she she is or who she is but i knew who i was and i knew what i was capable of and the work and the roles that i was um interested in that lived inside me well before that so I was very secure that I was never going to subscribe to putting limitations on myself as an actor or the roles I could play. Um, and ha- did have quite a singular, do have quite a singular focus um, for, for that type of work. Um, but, and it didn't, it's just a tuning out of the noise, I think. And so I think it, in answer to your question, that's sort of where I leaned into. Yeah. So it's a very, I mean, it sounds like, so it's a very, personal role just where you were able to connect with this character in so Mm -hmm. many different aspects now did as far as like when playing this character it sounds like where it was so personal for you did you learn anything new about yourself while playing hunter yes that's a really great question too i think this was one of the more empowering personally empowering roles i've done um with with real like lasting uh impact and i think it was just like the time in my life that it was, that I was doing this at, it was in the middle of COVID and um, that was really liberating. And also I think just like as a woman, just to really like lean into the, who I was, you know, in my power as a whole person and not have even an ounce of, and to sort of let go of that um, small voice that's that sort of like, apologetic part of us as women that feel like we have to tiptoe around things where Hunter just doesn't have that at all. And so doing that, I think it definitely left me with a strong impact. Yeah. And sometimes I'll ask myself, even still, it was so long ago that we shot that, but even still I'll ask myself in moments where I feel a bit um, inadequate or inferior or, or just like, don't know what to do. I often draw from that and still say like, well, what would Hunter do in this situation? And it really does help me. So I was going to say, yeah, we'll, you know, sit there and kind of go, what would Hunter do? So that, that that's right. pretty funny. Because so, it kind of gives you that, you know, when people say like, treat yourself as if, as you would treat your best friend. And then that sort of gives you the permission to do the thing or say the thing that you need to do. Yep. I think that sometimes the gift of being an actor and playing a role like that is it does allow you this permission to handle things in a different way. And then the best roles are after that, looking at yourself through that lens and saying like, you know, here's where I could stand to grow a bit more. And um, yeah, that definitely happened. So it's no secret that the, the Clark family definitely has a very interesting dynamic and Hunter, she has a, I'd say, needless to say, a very interesting relationship. It's very different with each one of the family members. For sure. Um, What was it like working with each one of them and just like uh, playing with that dynamic with all those different characters? Yeah, well, I will say the the creator and writer, Lauren Swicker, did such a great job with with writing each character um, as a true ensemble cast that way. So that's like such a beautiful part of it. And I think the other element that was so cool is that they really looked into Hunter's past and why she is the way she is um, and how she's sort of developed these coping mechanisms to 
survive in her life, you know, because she is such a survivor. Um, but I think you can see that come out in her relationships with, for example, in the first episode, the relationship with her sister, with Hassi, um, seeing the resentment for the fact that her sister is this, you know, she is the blood member of the family and the way that she um she's definitely treated that, a little bit differently the way that she yeah and and you know i say it when i say um on my birthday i got a fucking cupcake and you turned 18 and you get this big party so that's i think such a telling part of this character it's like she i i don't hunter doesn't need or want those things but she also notices the difference yeah. and that she's had to fight for them and it's really about how hassie is so um unappreciative and so you know, doesn't understand what the legacy is and she just wants to rebel and get away from it. So that's, that creates like such a nice tension with the two of them. And then there are some moments where um, I think you really find the, like there's this one moment where they, uh, Hassi hugs her. And I remember, especially with physical contact for Hunter, um, that was a big point of, you know, she, you see in her scene in the hotel room or the motel room, um, physically she, how she relates to people. She's very, um, like she's not comfortable with intimacy or closeness in like a normal way. It's sort of like used sex is definitely something that she uses as a weapon or it's purely like for herself. Um, and when her sister, you know, she's never really had like physical, she's not a warm person. She's never had like a mom that was like cozy and hugging her and loving her. So when her sister hugs her and Hunter has this really like um, abrasive reaction to it, yeah. that was like a, a really such a, um, I loved the way they wrote that moment. But then you see on the flip side with her father, he's really the only one that makes her smile and makes her laugh because everything else she tends to be quite guarded. So unless it's, you know, a play for, for a strategy. Um, but that relationship with their father, really wanting his approval, wanting his um, attention, wanting his um, just to be close to him because he is sort of the one that has helped her survive. And so she has this sort of codependent um really difficult relationship with him um wanting his approval and then also you know like being a bit angry and resentful of, of the whole dynamic there too and what she has to do to get what she wants and I, I was one of the things that like really impressed me where you're talking about just like all the you know you have the different families but just how many cast members are on this show and there's only five episodes the amount of time and yeah. each, like each character does kind of get at least one moment, if not more, right, to right. really shine in the show. Yeah. Is a lot harder than I think maybe some people like realize to do. It really is. And I think that's one of the, again, like the, that speaks so well to the writing more than anything else. Like it's just so it's written. Um, it really is written for an ensemble cast as a whole with these like dynamic characters. And the other thing I think on a bit more of a metaphorical sense, you know, it's called Casa Grande, Big House. It's a show about inclusivity. And I think that what's so great wow. about this show is even in the writing, even in the plots, even in the storylines, there is inclusivity in the characters. And there is like, you know, a real um, moment for each character to be quite seen so that's a beautiful aspect of it oh yeah no 100 percent. and one of my other favorite things about this show kate is that i love that the show has so many strong female characters but also not only like on the screen but behind the scenes as well so yeah what did it mean to you to be a, a part of a project like this absolutely yeah um I didn't know uh lauren or i didn't really know the team before going into it um and that was one of the things that really drew drew my attention to this as well when I first read it. I remember the first time I ever met um, or was directed by a female director. It was such a um, revelation to me that I hadn't any time before then. And that was years ago. And then I started thinking about that and I started studying directing and I directed an episode back when I was on Days of Our Lives. And um, that female relationship is so powerful. 
and something again that as they get older it is something that I want to you know lean into and and use my voice for and um Gabriella Gabriella our director is such an incredible woman and is someone who she works so well with uh, the balance of you know allowing the actors to have their vision and having quite a collaborative sense to her work and also like sticking true to her own um, authentic vision for things as well. So that's a really beautiful thing that you don't get very often. And, um, you know, it's funny. I remember when the future is female thing was kind of like taking off. I was in a, I was shooting something in Bermuda and it was like predominantly a female cast and crew. And I learned from that. I don't, I, I, it shifted things for me. Like I actually don't feel like an, a cast or crew that's a hundred percent female or a hundred percent male is the best case scenario. I think that it's when it's a blend because we all need that yin and yang and we all need, it's not about gender, but it's about the people. So we need the inclusivity of all these different, you know, people and opinions and perspectives and Casa Grande definitely had that. I mean, from Lauren to Ava to Christine um, and Gabriella and everyone else on the show. It's, yeah, it's, it was really, really special. Oh, yeah, no, it was a great blend. And one of the things, Kate, so I'm I'm a big horror fan myself. So, oh, OK. So, so you I don't know. know. Yeah. So, so you probably know where I'm going to go with this question. Oh, so yeah. Which watch. you're the first person to say this. Isn't that crazy? No really? one noticed. Yes. Oh. So I was watching the series and I'm like, I'm sitting there waiting and I'm, you know, watching the episode. I'm like, I'm almost you know positive that that's the scream house. And so like, I was like, well, let me, you know, let me check it out afterwards. And actually I talked to um, uh, Lauren from the show and yeah. she, she was like, yep. Yeah. That's the scream house. Isn't that wild? So I wanted to just ask you about what was it like? So not only well, you filmed there, but you filmed there around, it was like Halloween time, wasn't it? Oh no, not around on it Halloween. Was on so I mean, we did like? do it around, but my scenes were on, there were on, predominantly were on Halloween day. And I remember, and night, um, and I remember looking up at it and the lights, it, the way it was lit and stuff, it was like, it looked like a jack-o'-lantern because the way the lights were sort of shining through those windows. Um, and yeah, it was, it was like a really trippy experience. I mean, it's a beautiful property. It's so yeah. stunning. And the land is also like a big part of, you know, that land in Petaluma in, the, in Northern California um, is a big part of the show as well and its own character. But yeah, that's so funny. You said that no one notices that. And I always think that's so crazy. Oh, yep. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Scream is probably not only like one of my favorite like horror films, but it's probably like one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've lost count of how many times I've seen that original film. So. Yeah, it's, it, it was a wild throwback. I definitely want to, because I know they do, um, they do like tours and stuff yeah. where you can like stay there. So I want to, I'm, I'm out in New Hampshire. So I'm on the complete, uh, complete opposite yeah, side of the country. So eventually I got to, you know, make a trip to go out there and sure. stay at the place. So mm -hmm. I definitely had to ask you, you know, about that. Yes. So I wanted to, to switch over to one of your other projects. So you are mm -hmm. currently starring in General Hospital playing Christina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just talk, how did that, how did the opportunity come about and what was the audition process like? Because I know you were taking over the role of a character that had been on the show for a little bit. So how did that all come about? Yeah. So I was in New York doing press actually, and uh, working with a nonprofit agency that I work with as well. Um, and I got a phone call saying that they wanted uh, to talk to me about um, potentially coming over to GH. I didn't know any of the details and uh it was right around the time that Casa Grande was about to premiere. So I was busy and I, I, I wasn't immediately looking for or thinking about going back to a soap, to be quite honest. Um, and I had always said, you know, people ask all the time, like, would you ever go back to days? Would you ever go back to a soap? And I, I feel really happy with how I left things. And it, it always, my answer has always been, I will go wherever, um, I'm, I feel the character resonates with me more than like, you know, the, that's the most important thing. So when I had this meeting, uh, with Frank Valentini, the executive producer and Mark Teschner, the casting director, uh, they, they did tell me it was a recast of a character. And I, you know, just having sensitivity and knowing myself, uh, once I heard it was a recast, I had said like, please let's, there's no chance of me 
taking this role, if I start thinking about me, you know, taking it, shifting gears from another character. So please like, don't tell me that part yet. And let's just discuss broadly, like who, what the, what the role would be and what the storyline is that I would be coming on for. And once they said, um, it would be a, a story arc that handles the subject matter of endometriosis. Um, I totally got the chills and was like, okay, this is something that I really need to put some serious thought into because I have endometriosis myself. It's something that I've been a huge advocate for. And um, I was actually in New York about to speak on a panel for it. So it felt like really weird timing. Um, And my character on the show doesn't have it, but my sister on the show does. Uh, So I would be in a, in a story that's facilitating that. And it's not something that you see a lot in television. I mean, I don't think I've seen it at all yet. And so it really gave me pause because like I said, this was this time in my life, I'm really um, drawn to using my voice for things that matter. And that is a huge part of what I feel I'm called here to do. Um, And then the other part of this character is that she is a, a big advocate for the LGBTQIA plus community and she's bisexual herself. And so when I heard those two things, it really, I said, you know, let me really like think about this. Um, And it honestly happened so quickly. I think we agreed to it and I flew home and it was like, I don't know, four days later and I started shooting. So I, I, on the plane home, once they, once we confirmed everything, I just did a ton of research and spoke to everyone that I could there about the character. And of course reached out to uh, Lexi who played Christina before and was excited to move on to do some producerial work and other things. Uh, So yeah, that's how it went. It's so, so weird how sometimes things like in life happen like that, where like mm-hmm. you're saying, it just seems like almost like you were meant to to take on this role, just with everything that was kind of like lining up with your life. Yeah. It's so weird how how things like that happen. And I knew, I mean, my biggest concern was um, I wanted, I was so happy that uh, Costa Grande had finally found a home at Amazon Freebie. And I really wanted to honor that. And that was in first position. So I had to make sure that they were okay with working with my schedule for press and stuff around the premiere. And then, you know, if it does get a season pickup, which God willing, it will, um, that, that, that would still be something we could work out also. So it was like, everything kind of just aligned in a beautiful way. And also because there's a strike happening right now, I didn't know if it would even be, I I thought like, how can I be signing up for something when everything's shutting down? But, um, then I found out that that soaps are virtually the only thing that can work. Uh, so I, it wouldn't be really an issue. And it just literally felt like it's like when you meet the right partner in your romantic relationship, like things just like kind of locked into position. So, yeah, they're just quite, yeah. well, that's interesting. I didn't know that regarding soaps. And because that was one of my things. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, it kind of stinks where it's, you know, the writer's strike going on right now. But I, I didn't know. know that was that was the yeah. case. So, Kate, yeah, one of the things and you kind of mentioned that you said when you were first talking about the role, you didn't want to really bring up the whole recasting thing. I feel like recasting, it's such a tough thing because you want to respect what the previous actor had done with this character, but you also want to make the character your own as well. So Mm -hmm. what was your approach to doing that? How were you able to kind of balance those two things? Yeah. And I, you know, I'm friends with Lexi. So that was also something that I had to sort of uh, process in my brain and and talk to her about. I think, um, you know, I, my approach to it is, and it's so unique because it really only happens like this on soaps, like in, in, in theater, there's no other real, like you might see someone recast if it's like a pilot recast and stuff, but it doesn't quite happen like this in the middle of, um, of a, of a series. But uh, yeah, I, got all the information I needed from discussing with the writers and the team and the producers and everybody uh, about the character's history. So I didn't need to, I I preferred not to watch um, her work on this. Uh, And then also I knew that they had wanted to go a bit of a different way and that's why they were approaching me for this. So I think that really gave it some breath and some movement and liberated me to say, okay, I don't have to 
fit into trying to be who this person was. Um, I, I know that the, the, you know, original idea for this was because they wanted to sort of, um, take her in a different direction, which I really just like embraced. Which, you know, so that's nice. I mean, it's nice that you knew the previous actor. I feel like that makes it a little bit easier too, when you can kind of have that conversation well, with them. Sort of. Yeah, or it I mean, can be, I guess it can be a little bit be difficult too. You, it, you know, yeah. anyway, and I, I was a recast on days and I, somebody recast me when I left. Um, so I do have a sensitivity to it and I do get it, but I think fortunately, um, just like things aligned and shifted in the right time and place for me to be there, things were in the same regard for her. So she was, you know, it, it was a, it was a, um, well-received shift i think and so do you think i i feel like it probably is yes but do you feel like your time playing on days of our lives kind of really helped you prepare for taking on this role on general hospital as well oh gosh i think my time on days of our lives helped me prepare for any role i ever do really i mean and i'll never i will always credit days of our lives for that because i booked that right out of college and um it really is the best training you could ever get and i think you know, if you use your time there wisely and you treat it like, um, treat it like the work that you want to be doing and you hold yourself to that standard, um, it's, I mean, there's nothing better because you're, you're doing an obscene amount of pages of dialogue every day and the work ethic is so strong and it has to be so strong and you get to use your creativity in your craft in such a different way because the circumstances are so outlandish, which, you know, of course you can play into and just like judge and think, Oh, it's so crazy. But to make that real, um, it is, it is a fun challenge. And, um, you know, I think soaps get a really bad rap. I think people, um, have, like I said earlier, have an idea of what that genre is and what they stand for. Um, and who the, what the actors, um, that are on soaps are capable of. And I just think it's, um, a very archaic sort of old tired narrative because, uh, it's the hardest working genre that I've certainly ever been a part of. And it, it's incredible pe preparation. Like, I think that in like one week, when I was on Days of Our Lives, I remember I had felt like I had done like a rom-com, a horror film of, you know, I felt like I had done all these different genres because it commands that sort of part of your brain. So, um, yeah, I think that soaps are really unique that way. Oh, yeah. No, I, I feel like yeah, it's a little unfair how some people try to kind of place them in a box. But I mean, they're loved by so many people. I mean, it's for a sure. reason why these shows have been around for as yeah. long as they have been. Well, Kate, is there, to wrap things up, is there anything else that you wanted to say, you know, just about Casa Grande or General Hospital in general and to the fans? Um, just keep watching, keep supporting and and crossing our fingers for a second season. Um, really honored and proud to be a part of a show with Casa Grande that, uh, like I said, is, is a bilingual show that really addresses in a honorable way the... Um, sort of invisible members of society and how um, how important it is for us to look at that as as a whole and really reframe our thoughts about that. So I'm, I'm so grateful to have been a part of it. And um, yeah, I am. I'm loving hearing about how people are binging it and, and watching it and it's available on Amazon Freebie. Yep. Well, thank you, Kate, so much again for taking yes, time out of your schedule. Yes, thank you, of course. And, you know, coming on here, talking about your career, talking about these two amazing projects. So make sure you guys check out both of these. Again, uh, Casa Grande is on freebie. General Hospital is airing on TV. Again, thank you, Kate. You are welcome back anytime in the future. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Hi, I'm Kate Mancy. I play Hunter on Casa Grande, which is streaming on Amazon freebie. You are watching Pop Culture with Pat.